Good Thursday morning, everyone. Hope you're doing well. We've got more Seahawks content. We've got another edition of Pass Coverage Thursday. Before I get into the numbers, I want to say that the Hawks Nest collaboration is coming up uh, later today. Should be around 3 o'clock like it usually is. It will be on this channel this week. So keep an eye on this channel. I should be posting a video in a handful of hours to market. And around 3 o'clock we should be going live to talk Seahawks stuff. So I know a lot of you guys like that collaboration. So we're going to continue to do it. And it, it could get a little fiery. It could get a little heated. It could get interesting because uh, things are not going well. And me and him may have a lot of... Uh, lot of um, strong things to say. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that for now. All right, so pass coverage Thursday. Let's take a look at our defensive players and see who's getting it done in coverage and who isn't. So we're, we're going to start with the linebackers. And by the way, we are dropping our defensive ends into coverage so much. I might have to make a new category just for those guys. Like I never thought Dunlap would be dropping into coverage enough for, to, for me to open up a category here, but I might have to. I don't want to. I really don't want to, but I might have to. But anyway, for now, linebackers, Bobby Wagner has been targeted 34 times, allowed 26 completions for 218 yards. It's uh, against the Rams. He gave up a decent chunk of yards. He didn't play great in coverage, I don't think. Overall, it's the least of our problems in, on this on this front, but he's he's not really playing that well. Uh, I think in the Rams game, Matty F. Brown actually did some breakdowns on it. He uh, pointed out that Wagner seemed like he was getting fooled in coverage a lot, but we've got so much to worry about right now I can't even exert the energy for it, especially when he's standing next to a guy like Jordan Brooks, who I know Brooks is not does not have the reputation of being good in coverage, so it's not shocking, but this is a guy who is much younger and much faster than Wagner, so the fact that he's he's getting roasted in coverage like this, be it because of him, the player, or the scheme being bad, it's much more alarming. So, five games in, Brooks has been targeted 26 times, allowed 20 completions, 77% completion percentage almost, 233 yards, and two touchdowns, QB rating of 129.3, so bad. Just bad, and against the Rams, he gave up a couple of big plays. The almost touchdown to Cooper Cup on one of the later drives was on him, but you look at that play and you just go, why the hell is Jordan Brooks covering Cooper Cup? So, something's got to give there. And not too much else to say in the linebacker department. Daryl Taylor finally got targeted, but he um, allowed one completion for one yard. So uh, that's cool. 79.2. Uh, yeah, I, I guess he's doing his job here. Uh, Daryl Taylor is definitely one of the guys on this defense who I am very happy with. And if we end up having to nuke this roster this offseason, which we may very well be headed towards... Daryl Taylor is definitely one of the uh, blue chip cornerstones that you can at least have have some degree of a foundation going forward around. So props to Daryl Taylor. He's uh, exceeded even my expectations, and I like him. Cody Barton didn't play, so nothing new there. And that's it for linebackers. Let's go over to cornerback, where we're going to have to... Uh... <laughs> oh, this is not going to be fun, guys. So... First off, let me just say, I think DJ Reed had a pretty good game. I think he got targeted eight times and allowed four completions. So on the season, he's actually done a really good job fighting to uh, prevent prevent a high completion percentage. It's down to 54 and a half, which is really good for a cornerback. Now, he has gotten beat for a couple of touchdowns now this season. And as for yards, he did give up a decent chunk of yards against the Rams because they did bust some bigger plays on him. But with DJ Reed, I see a guy who is fighting and trying really hard to be good. It's not, it's not totally working out yet, but allowing a QB rating against of 95.1 is workable. I'm, I'm not, he needs to force a couple turnovers. He needs to limit some of the big plays. He did allow some down the field plays against the Rams, but there's a lot of things wrong with his defense. I think DJ Reed is actually pretty low on that list. Uh, Trey Flowers didn't play on defense, so nothing new here, and, oh boy. Okay, uh, Sidney Jones. 
So first off, full transparency, I did put the 68-yard Deshaun Jackson play on him. I know some people are putting it on Jamal. That's fine. You do you, but I'm going to do me. And me, looking at that play after having some opportunity to think about it and process it, I, I think that's more of a Sidney Jones thing than a Jamal Adams thing. Not that Jamal Adams played it great. Not that Jamal Adams didn't make me mad on that play, but looking at that play, it seemed like Sidney Jones was the guy who made the initial mistake that Jamal was trying to cover up. So disagree with me if you want to, but I did put that play on him just like I put the broken play against the Niners on him. So by my count, he's at 19 targets in two games, 15 completions, 311 yards two touchdowns, perfect QB rating. So Sidney Jones has allowed 311 passing yards in two games. Yeah, don't tell me this guy's good yet. Tell me that you like his potential, but don't tell me he's good yet because he's not. <laughs> Bless you on Austin, still nothing. Trey Brown, looks like he's going to get back this week, but still nothing. Marquise Blair didn't play a lot against the Rams, but when he did play, it was fine. He got targeted twice, did not allow a completion meaning his uh, completion percentage against is down to 43, and his QB rating against is down to 59.2. So it's a small sample size. I'm not deriving a ton from it, but Blair seems to be fine. Ugo Amadi had a reasonably good game. He got targeted four times. He allowed three completions. Not really too big a place, though. There were only 18 yards counted against him. His QB rating allowed for the season is still 108.3, which is... I'm not excited about it, but it's certainly not the worst. And that takes us home with our cornerbacks. Now let's go to safety. So the thing is, the the two play the two monster plays that I credited to Sidney Brown. I'm sorry, Sidney Jones. Um, some people are crediting to Jamal Adams, the broken play against the Niners, and the 68 yarder to Deshaun Jackson. Now, if you gave those two plays to Jamal Adams, his coverage numbers would be abysmal, like worst in the league for a safety type stuff. Uh, so if you want to do that, you go right ahead and do that. That's your right. It's a free country, unless you don't live in a free country, in which case, uh, I don't know, you can still probably do it anyway. But uh, by my count, Jamal Adams has been targeted 17 times, 11 completions, 65% completion percentage, about 125 yards. He did allow the one touchdown against the um, Rams to their tight end. And uh, QB rating allowed 106.3. So the thing is, even if you take those two plays off his ledger, this is not good enough. Jamal Adams is supposed to be excellent in coverage. He was in New York for the most part. So I don't need a safety who's okay in coverage, which I, I confess that I think through five games, he's been at least okay in coverage, but we need better than okay. Where are the turnovers? Where are the pass breakups? Where are the plays on the ball? So even if you give him the maximum benefit of the doubt, which I have, I need to see something more, and I think a lot of you guys are on the same boat. Uh, Quandre Diggs, he had a pretty good game against the Rams, including that big interception. Uh, so far through five games, he's been targeted 12 times, seven completions, Still a little uncomfortable with that, but it's coming back to a point where it's reasonable. 132 yards, no touchdowns allowed, QB rating against 57. He's played well the last couple games, I will say that. I think he's played well. And uh, Ryan Neal did not get targeted, he barely played. And that's it for pass coverage Thursday. That's all we got. So, we got some real issues here. From where I'm sitting, the the problems in coverage on this defense. If I had to pinpoint some players, you would you would definitely start with Jordan Brooks, and then you would go to Sidney Jones slash Trey Flowers. Although, I'm sorry guys, these numbers to me clearly indicate that Trey Flowers was playing much better than Sidney Jones. So, I'm a little more adamant about the uh, Sidney Jones side of that equation, and. That's about it right now, but it, it really goes to show you, doesn't it, that one weak spot on your defense can be all it takes for your defense to just get completely gashed. So, Trey Brown might get back this week. 
if he can be better than Trey Flowers or Sidney Jones at the other cornerback spot, that's big. I don't know what we do about Brooks. I don't. I don't think there's much you can do there. You knew he was bad in coverage when you drafted him, so... That might just be unsolvable for the time being. At the very least, we can stop trying to use him to defend Cooper Cup, but... Um, hey, if Trey Brown wants to come in and save this secondary like DJ Reed did last year, I sure would appreciate it. All right, see you guys later. Go Hawks. Let me know what you think down below. Should be another video coming today, and then we've got the collab. Keep an eye out. Peace. Go Hawks.